Aleluia. Now unto the Lamb upon the throne We raise a sound We raise a sound For He is God and God alone Hallelujah Hallelujah Sing it one more time Now unto We raise a sound, we raise a sound, for his God and God alone. Father, we thank you for tonight. You have brought us to the house of God for encounters, for transformation, for empowerment. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare tonight that there is the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles. Glorify Jesus in our midst, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's give Jesus a big, big hand clap. Hallelujah. Please be seated. It's good to be back home and um, we thank the Lord. Thank you for his marvelous hand upon our lives. We're going to start tonight by lifting up our hands and our voices in one minute as a global family to just say thank you for the mighty things that the Lord did glorifying himself. Go ahead and say thank you. Tell him thank you. From every nation and every region connecting tonight, let's lift up sounds of worship, sounds of gratitude. No man can do these things except God be with you. Is someone saying thank you? Thank you to the King of Kings for salvation, for healings. You get the glory. You get the praise, you take the honor, I just want to say thank you, you get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor, so we we have come as a global family to say thank you thank you for your wonder walking power thank you for bringing glory to your name even through our lives thank you for the manifestation of your power your glory your grace doing the things that only you can do we return glory to you tonight and father we decree and declare that it will please you to continue revealing Jesus through our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for tonight. For in Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. God bless you. Let me officially convey my gratitude um, to everyone first here in the house and then across Europe, 
those who traveled from far and near and those who served our precious workforce and all who gave their best and their all um, towards this conference thank you so much the lord bless you in the name of jesus the most important thing in this conference is that jesus was revealed and that jesus was glorified we thank god for the privilege to be used as vessels and we know that the best is yet to come in jesus name all right so let's go to the business of tonight tonight's teaching is a question the lord wants to ask us and the answer to this question will determine our relevance even in the days to come we're living in very prophetic times that require discernment we're living in very prophetic times that require like the sons of Issachar understanding what the Lord is demanding first from the saints as far as his end time program is concerned hallelujah and it's my responsibility under God to walk in partnership with the word and the spirit and to bring us teachings and doctrine that build and equip us to be relevant in God's program even at times as this so I want you to please pay attention tonight knowing that the Word of God comes to enlighten the Word of God comes to empower the Word of God comes to give wisdom hallelujah God's method has always been his word if you ignore the Word of God you have ignored potential for growth you ignore the word of God you have ignored potential for excellence you have ignored potential for a life of victory and a life of relevance hallelujah and so the Lord will grant us grace tonight and let me request one more time that you please pay attention and um, trust the Lord to bring his word in season to bless to build to empower if you believe that say amen. amen may i request that you lay your hands on your head and just pray for one moment declare that your mind is open in the name of jesus declare that in the name of jesus your mind is open Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. You're praying. Holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. We we'll begin our reading from verse 1. Who is on the Lord's side? Exodus 32 from verse 1. We're teaching tonight on the topic who is on the Lord's side. And when the people saw that Moses delayed, this was when Moses went up the mountain for 90 days, spending time to receive the commandment from God. The Bible says, The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as from this Moses, the man that brought us up out from the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. In other words, we don't know what has happened to him. He's taken so long. Maybe he's died in the presence of God there. And we're not ready to keep trusting for nothing. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. Verse 4. 
And the Bible says, And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graven toll. And after he had made it a molten calf, and they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. The next verse. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast of the Lord. Next verse. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Moses is with the Lord now. Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. Take note now. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. And they have made them a molten calf. They have worshipped it. They have sacrificed thereunto. And said, These be the gods, O Israel, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and that I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God, and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand are we still here verse 12 wherefore should the egyptians speak moses is talking with the lord now and say for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountain and to consume them from the face of the earth turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people 13. it says remember abraham isaac and israel this we can stop here and discuss how a man is negotiating with god you see that moses is attempting to in a way um just convince the lord not to destroy these people and he's not just speaking blindly he's using a lot of spiritual intelligence remember abraham isaac and israel thy servants to whom thou swearest by thy own self and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have spoken of, I will give unto thee and thy seed. And they shall inherit it forever. 14. And the Lord repented of the evil which he taught to do unto his people. 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. And the two tablets of the testimony were in his hands. The tables were written of both their sides. On one side and on the other they were written 16 and they were tables and the tables were the work of God that means he wrote them himself and the writing was the writing of God graven upon the tablets 17 and when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted he said unto Moses there is noise of war in other words Joshua thought that you know their enemies had come to subdue them verse 18 and he said, it is not the voice of them, Moses is replying now, that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear, 19. It says, and it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, Moses now, that he saw the calf and the dancing and Moses's anger this was the same man who was telling the Lord not to be angry Moses's anger waxed hot and he cast the tables out of his hand watch the punishment and break them beneath the mount 20 and he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire he ground it into powder he strode it upon the water and he made the children of Israel drink of it hallelujah it's easy to talk when you are not the one wearing the shoes <laughs> and Moses said unto Aaron what did this what did these people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them five more verses 22 and Aaron said let not the anger of my Lord wax hot thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief 23 
for they said unto me make us gods which shall go before us for and as for this moses the man who brought us up from out of the land of egypt we wot not what has become of him 24 and i said unto them whosoever hath any gold let them break it off so they gave it to me and i cast it in the fire and there came out this calf 25 and when moses saw that the people were naked for aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies 26 moses said he stood at the gate of the camp and said who is on the lord's side let him come unto me and the bible says and all the sons of levi gathered themselves together unto him may the lord bless the reading of his word in jesus name hallelujah we'll read one more scripture and then i'll begin to teach joshua chapter 24 joshua 24 will begin our reading from verse 14. i always like scripture to begin speaking for itself and then we'll take it from there now therefore joshua is wrapping up his time now he's about to die and he's giving his final charge to the people now therefore fear the lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in egypt and serve the lord next verse and if it seem evil unto you to serve the lord choose you this day whom ye will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the amorites in whose land ye dwell but as for me and my house someone receive it for yourself as for me and my house we will serve the lord say it one more time but as for me and my house we will serve the lord amen verse 16 and the people answered and said god forbid that we should forsake the lord to serve other gods for the lord our god he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way therein wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed 18 and the lord drove out before us all the people even the amorites which dwelt in the land therefore we will also serve the lord for he is our god they are making their declarations now 19 and joshua said unto the people ye cannot serve the lord for for he is a holy god in other words you cannot serve him in this state he is a jealous god he will not forgive your transgressions nor your sin 20 if ye forsake the lord and serve strange gods then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he had done you good 21 and the people said unto joshua nay but we will serve the lord next verse and joshua said unto the people ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen you the lord to serve him and they said we are witnesses now therefore put away said he the strange gods which are among you and incline your heart unto the god of israel 24 and the people said unto joshua the lord our god will we serve and his voice will we obey we're almost there 25 so joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statute and an ordinance in shechem and joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of god and took a great stone and set it up under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the lord 27 and joshua said unto all the people behold this stone shall be a witness unto us for it had heard all the words which the lord spake unto us and it shall be therefore a witness unto you lest ye deny your god the final verse 28 so joshua let the people depart every man to his inheritance amen now look up very interesting in the first scripture we read how that the people had left you know um egypt the land of captivity and they were somewhere in the 
you know, the wilderness. And Moses was summoned by God to go and receive commandments to guide them because they were, uh, Bible history would tell us there were over two million people and you couldn't lead a people like that without laws that would guide them. And so the Lord was giving Moses, uh, you know, the laws and Moses spent some time with God and the people became so impatient and they said, look, we're tired of this thing. Maybe Moses has lost his place and has died. Aaron, make us gods. We remember in Egypt, every time they would worship these gods, you know, Ra and all these other gods, let's make us these gods. We would donate our gold, the same gold God gave them. I hope you know they were slaves. And if you remember, they spoiled the Egyptians by the favor of God. Now they had used those same, the same gold they built a calf. So while the Lord was with Moses, Moses noticed that the Lord began to be angry. And he said, something is happening in the camp. These people have forsaken me. They've left you thinking you are dead. And now they are beginning to worship other gods. And Moses supposedly pacified God. And when he came to the camp himself, he was angry. He broke the commandments, ground it into powder and gave the people to drink. Then he made a statement. He said, listen, before... I allow the Lord vent vengeance upon you. Let me know now who is on the Lord's side. In other words, I will give you room to choose. And the Bible says only the sons of Levi moved and said we're on the Lord's side. When you continue the reading, you will see that an earthquake happened and it opened up the earth and swallowed over 3,000 of them. Hallelujah. Then we come to Joshua 24. Remember that when you read Joshua from verse 1, Joshua was the successor of Moses, the same Moses we read about. So he, what we're reading is a continuation. Are we together now? Yes. He charged Joshua and Joshua led the people excellently. They threw down Jericho, you know, the whole event that happened um, at, at Ai. And then now, finally, they'd gotten access to their possessions. He's shared the land and he was giving them his final charge as an old man. He was about to depart and he began to charge them. He said, listen, something happens to men when they have results. Something happens to men when they come to a place of inheritance. So let me give you my final charge that it is within your power to choose either to serve the God of heaven or to serve these other gods that you have seen. And they made up their minds unanimously that they would serve the Lord God. So he made a covenant and dedicated them afresh unto the Lord. I'm teaching on who is on the Lord's side. We live in a world today that is very complex. People vacillate their convictions. Today they are for God. Tomorrow they are for something else. Uh, at the slightest communication of pain or disappointment or setback, people seem to have a new orientation as to how they want to live their lives spiritually speaking many people have caused god to his face simply because of one sad event or the other that has happened right now there's a lot of economic hardship across the nations even our nation and so many people are beginning to doubt their convictions people who once were on fire for god seem to be cold and not care and not mind in fact, it's so sad that those who used to work in the vineyard, people who were once pastors, laboring missionaries, are now hanging their boots and saying, this God thing does not, it doesn't seem to work. I've served God 10 years, 20 years. Sadly, some of them are our parents, our loved ones, our relatives, and they will tell you, don't talk to me about this God. In 1970 this, in 1980 this, I gave my all, I served the Lord, and it doesn't look like there is any profit in serving the Lord. And so this message comes as a wake-up call. This message comes as a very strong call, bringing us to a point where we have to re-examine by the Spirit where we stand, especially in light of the days that are now before us and are soon to be upon us hallelujah let me start by discussing the implications of being on the lord's side what are the implications of being on the lord's side when the bible says that a man can and should be on the lord's side 
Now, you want to understand this statement, you will need to have a little appreciation for sports. Many of you here, I believe, watch football, and this is not to create any controversy, but some of you are already smiling because I mentioned soccer or football because you are now thinking of your team. And um, there is such a disturbing, in fact, loyalty for teams and sports, whether it's in soccer, basketball, but football especially, or soccer as we know, um, there are so many teams, popular teams that we have, you know, and um, they have what they call a fan base. Am I right on that? And some of you are dedicated fans of certain clubs, very dedicated. You can fight for them. You can die for them. You can argue as to who won, who should be bought over as a player or who should be thrown out. And there are people who begin to argue over clubs and they say, if, you are, if you've not started watching football from 2001, don't join this argument, you know. And um, I've had quite an experience watching people's zeal. And it's very instructive. You see people remove their shirts, they endure the heat, standing close to cinema houses, crying, weeping, expressions of emotions, arguing, husbands fighting with wives because they are... You know two teams apart now the point i'm trying to communicate is that in this scenario when two teams are about to play usually even the best of friends the moment they are ready to watch the football match they now diverge themselves to different sides for instance someone can say i'm for arsenal then another person says i'm for Man U. that's what you call it and then every other team that you know that i don't know Hallelujah. Are we together? And sometimes you can find the best of friends. I mean, these were people who ate together. They woke up together, rejoicing together. And simply because there is a match playing, they can look at themselves with such disdain, argue and insult themselves. And you see players rejoice when they have an opportunity or fans rejoice when they have the opportunity to buy the original used shirts of some of the players. They rejoice, you know people subscribe to different platforms that seem to promote a strong fan base and there are people who would tell you some have even tattooed it on themselves i'm a die-hard uh, arsenal fan or a die-hard man U fan or a die-hard whatever it is you know so that, that is the concept of identity they have chosen to identify with a team and even in the face of defeat there are times that you see that when a match is over you see a group of people rejoicing laughing at others and you see others disappointed but still determined to remain there have you seen that happen disappointed but determined they will patiently wait for another season when they hope that their teams will win again so it's in that similitude that Moses is charging the people and this is what he's saying you spent 430 years in Egypt you saw the Egyptians and you saw their gods you had an opportunity to see their gods walk and act you had an opportunity to see them use divination and spiritism and you saw whatever merits and demerits that came from that practice and you also had an opportunity to see the true God, Yahweh. When I came to advocate your exodus, you saw the plagues, you were witnesses. Now, that you have deviated simply because I was away for maybe some weeks. He says, I'm giving you one last chance before the Lord vents his anger. You have to make a very strong and a very firm decision. Who is on the Lord's side? who is on the lord's side who is on the lord's side write this down please what is the implication of being on the lord's side number one the lord's side is the side of protection and preservation please write it down the lord's side is the side of protection and preservation psalm 63 and verse 8 psalm 63 and verse 8 
He said, My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. The Lord's side. I'm discussing the implications of being on the Lord's side. What are the merits? Is there any benefit of being on the Lord's side? That number one, the Lord's side is the side of protection and preservation. John 17 and verse 12. Jesus is praying now. John 17 and verse 12. 1, 2. John 17, 12. He says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. Those that you gave me, those that came to me, I have kept. He says, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 2. Is God speaking to us already? Second Timothy 1, 12, my apologies. 1 verse 12. Second Timothy 1 and verse 12. It says, for which things cause, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. Powerful scripture. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. That when you come to his side and commit things or commit your life, he is able to keep even against that day. So when Moses is asking who is on the Lord's side, he's asking who desires to be on the side of protection and preservation. Please look at me. There is no, in the world that we live in right now, there is no amount of physical security that is enough to protect an individual from the spiritual, emotional, and even physical harm and mayhem that plagues our society. We have seen people attacked with the most sophisticated security architecture. We've seen people become victims of something the psalmist calls the arrows that fly by day, the noisome pestilences by night, is that true? The destruction that wastes in noonday. We've seen people healthy and strong, yet they died. We've seen people attempting to manage mysterious sicknesses that doctors and, you know, medics are not able to diagnose. The Lord's side means immunity against the wickedness and the mayhem that plagues our world. In fact, the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. You believe that? It says the righteous run net to it and they are saved. That some trust in horses and chariots. Now you must understand that horses and chariots are very important. The armies in ancient times who climb on horses and chariots to fight. So it says some trust in horses and chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. The Lord's side is a side of protection and preservation. I don't know about you, but I submit to you by the integrity of the word that the days that are coming will require supernatural protection and supernatural pro preservation because you see for many of you the way God is training you and the way God is raising you there are altars that fought people who went before you at the moment someone begins to rise from a family here comes these wicked spirits and this altar it says what seest thou and he said four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Jerusalem, and against Israel. It says, so that no man doth lift up his head. Have you seen a scenario where someone who now becomes the breadwinner or the one God is lifting to wipe the tears of a family and all of a sudden he will tell you, I just went out and a bike hit me. Shout God forbid. One more time, shout God forbid. Who is on the Lord's side means who is interested in securing the protection and the preservation of Elohim in these perilous times, these evil days. Where someone can give you a kiss as Judas, you will think it's a kiss of love, but it's a sign to the enemy, this is the one to kill. Have you not heard of people who arrange the kidnap of their fathers? 
their brothers and they join the people to cry the bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked is someone getting blessed already let me tell you the truth it's good to be in the side of the police it's good to be this on the side of the law enforcement agencies the dss they have their place excellent people it's good to be in the side of all kinds of people it's good to be in the side of um, doctors and medics and paramedics but the lord is asking you a question if god does not build a house who will claim that he can build it for you are we together yes who is on the lord's side meaning who is on the side of preservation i don't know about you but i'm not ready to risk my life giving a chance to trust mundane things and people i have found that god is the only one who can protect a man the bible says he stands by me as a mighty terrible one I don't know the arrows that fly by day. I don't know how many shrines my name is taken to every day. I don't know how many shrines coin. You will be joking to believe everybody loves you. You will be joking to think that while you are praying in tongues, while you are rising and declaring, God lift me. I hope you know that while you are making up your mind to be a blessing, Satan is also a witness. He's watching your prayer. He's watching your sacrifice. He's already seen the formation of the anointing upon you. He knows you are an apostle rising for sure he knows you're a prophet rising for sure he knows that you're a kingdom entrepreneur rising for sure and I assure you by the integrity of scripture Satan will do all within his power don't say I did not trouble anyone the fact that you found yourself on this side of God's kingdom and you made up your mind for Jesus a line has been drawn who is on the Lord's side who is on the side of safety and preservation. Our forefathers, even though they did not serve the God of heaven, they were intelligent enough to know that they would never leave home without protection. Am I right on that? They had all kinds of things. They would tie some, they would swallow some. Some of us, even growing up, sadly, maybe we were victims of some of these people they made all kinds of incisions they made incantations they were not evil it was their way they knew that the war is risky to walk without protection and preservation someone can shake your hand and say how are you i've not seen you for 10 years and from the day he shook your hand you don't know whether it's hiv or it's cancer you just know you are losing weight you just know you are not seeing well. What is happening to you? Where did you go to? I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. I lay me down and I slept. I wait. For the Lord sustains me. The Lord had a shield for me. My glory my Prophesy it upon your destiny. you're seated I'd like you to begin to prophesy protection upon yourself and upon your children no power no enchantment no charm will walk over my life in the name of Jesus I declare that I am on the Lord's side oh they shall gather but that their gathering is not of God there is a mysterious force that will scatter them declare prayer covering over your children over your ministry I will not be the victim of the conclusion of the wickedness of men immune by the jealousy and the preserving power of Elohim someone pray I have no covenant with death I have no covenant with destruction I have no covenant with necromancy and invocation of dark powers activities of familiar spirits
Aleluya. 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 The higher you rise in life, the more you must understand the mystery of preservation. Please hear what I'm telling you. I'm not scaring you, but I'm opening you to the reality of the world that we live in. Are we together? What did Jesus do to command attacks? All he needed to do was exploits. And a, a group of people gathered and said, this person is making news too much. No, this is the whole city is turning towards him. What do we do now? Who can we use? What can we use? Let me prophesy to someone, any gathering in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, where your name is mentioned for evil, may fire consume that gathering. May fire consume that gathering. May fire consume that gathering. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Let me speak over any man of God here. Any attack to fight your mantle. Every attack to fight your church. Every orchestration of darkness to fight your relevance. It goes down in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. This is the reason why it matters whose side you are. Jesus told us that we have the liberty to serve many things, not just many gods. In fact, you can choose God or mammon. You can choose the God of heaven or Baal. You can choose God of heaven or whatever kind of thing. You can even serve yourself, be the God of yourself. Like the rich fool said, my soul find rest. Number two. What does it mean to be on the Lord's side? What is the implication of being on the Lord's side in this day and in this time? Are you ready now? The Lord's side is the side of power. The Lord's side is the side of power. It says, our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. If God needed power to make the heavens and the earth, it would take power to make anything in your life, including the future that you desire. Our Lord God, he says, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. My apologies, Jeremiah 32 and you find 16, 17, 17. Our Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Please write this scripture down and don't forget it. In this world, you need power. Yes, sir. Power. Power to subdue. Power against. The Bible says, as many as believed in him, he gave them power. Not just an information. The disciples had knowledge, but he said, tarry. Knowledge alone will fail you. Tarry until you are endued with power. Man of God, you do ministry in this end time without securing power. Businessman, without securing power, you will be a casualty for nothing. Power. Hallelujah. The Bible says that they found the nation of Israel gathered together and they assumed a certain formation with the ark being in their center. And when they called on Balaam to curse them, he tried and it did not work. He said, listen, a shout of the king is in the midst of them. There is a formation that has produced power that no matter what it is that has come, is being resisted. It takes power to be wealthy and to retain wealth. It takes power to raise children with the wicked options that plague our world. That your child will ask you a question that you cannot sleep because of something he has learned somewhere. Growing up, if parents did not want you to watch certain things, all they needed to do was to off the television. And everyone knows that it's over. But right now, you off the TV, they own many other things many other things the bible says there is as it were many voices and that none of them is without signification who is on the lord's side means who is interested in accessing power to remain power to continue power to subdue 
Number three. What is the implication of being on the Lord's side? Are you ready for number three? The Lord's side is a side of victory. The Lord's side is a side of victory. The Bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous. The shout of joy and victory shall not depart. Listen, the tent of the righteous. Victory. Now, thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph. Listen, look up please. For the believer in Christ, challenges are not unusual. No, it is defeat that is unusual. It is not unusual to be challenged, whether in your health, whether in your finances, whether in your marriage, whether with your children, it's not unusual. Did your Bible not say many are the afflictions of the... But it does not stop there. It says the Lord delivered him from them. How many? So the moment you find yourself in a disturbing situation, before you try to manage it, verify whose side you are standing on. Who is on the Lord's side? Meaning who is on the side of victory? As a man of God, if you are not on the Lord's side, respectfully speaking, you can choose the side of manipulation. You can choose the side of outsourcing negative demonic powers. In the end, it will fail and fail woefully. Who is on the Lord's side? The Lord's side is the side of victory. Can I give us two more? Number four, the Lord's side is the side of joy and pleasure. Joy and pleasure. Yes, sir joy and pleasure psalm 16 and verse 11 the lord's side is the side of joy and pleasure let's read it together if you're a child of god ready one to read thou will show me the path of life uh-huh in thy presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand so if you are not in his presence you are not at his right hand you will not see joy and you will not see pleasure Hallelujah. There are people in this season that in the midst of lack, in the midst of want, in the midst of economic turmoil, God will place garments of honor upon them that you look at their lives and you marvel and wonder and say, wow, look, it looks like there is famine in Samaria. How come these people are enjoying abundance like this? Because when you come to the Lord's side, you have come to the side of joy you have come to the side of pleasure. He said, hitherto you have asked for nothing. He says to ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Which of you, the Bible says, whose father, give us Matthew chapter 7 now from verse 7. Ask and you shall receive, he says. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Is that true? Verse 8, he says, for everyone that asketh receiveth. Everyone that asketh receive it. Watch this. If you believe that I have something to help you and you want to ask me, you're not going to stand from a distance to ask me. You have to draw close to my direction. Is that true? Coming on the Lord's side, meaning you are coming to the side of the one who you believe has all things to give you. And he said, everyone who comes close enough to ask, to seek, to knock, there is, there is a guarantee that it shall be opened, that you shall find. Hallelujah. That which of you will your sons ask for bread and you give him a stone or ask for fish and you give him a serpent? That if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. You will live a very sad life, a very defeated life by every standard and every definition if you reject the Lord's side. And technology, respectfully speaking, has its side. Culture has its side. Are we together? The devil directly has his side. Experience also has his side. But those who will win in this time are those who choose the Lord's side. For the way of the Lord is the way I choose the way of the Lord. Sing it one more time from your heart. 
can do ministry the way you think they are doing it you can do business the way you think they are doing it and people gather you and say this is how they do it now or you can choose that I will be on the Lord's side may be unpopular but that is still the Lord's side the Bible says narrow is the way that leads to life and there are few that follow thereof it says broad is the way Huh? that leads to destruction and many this is how society is doing it now when you want a job this is how to do it huh? yes when you want to do ministry you want a crowd there is somebody who will give you something you eat it or rub it or do whatever you do with it if you want money from people members there is a way you do it <laughs> for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom I choose the way listen the Bible says in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8 it says and Daniel post in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat what was wrong with the portion of the king's meat was it the animal that was slaughtered no it was the sacrifice and the covenant that was connected to it there was a particular dedication that those animals those rituals and he said no i have a covenant with god i know that it's a pleasure to come and eat with the king but i know what you've done with that animal i know that you have sacrificed it to a god somewhere and i will not do anything that would defile my honor to the king and he had to eat leaves vegetables and water after 10 days when they came and presented themselves they found that he was he was healthier he was fresher are we together the Lord's side is the side of joy and pleasure can I tell you do not generalize the fact that there's economic hardship everywhere do not generalize the fact that things are not working everywhere while I respect and sympathize with our world today and our society that these things uh, they are not they are not on true statements but there is a place of immunity the Lord's side is a place of exemption where people can be exempted and you can enjoy pleasure you can enjoy joy and abundance even in the midst of scarcity did the Bible not say when men say there is a casting down for you depending on whose side you are don't claim the scripture till you verify whose side you are there are many who keep confessing i will say there is a lifting up but then they are speaking from a side that is far from god's side it may not be your experience number five what is the fifth implication of being on the lord's side is the lord teaching someone tonight the lord's side is the side of rest round about the Lord's side oh hallelujah this is powerful the side of rest round about rest round about in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28 please give it to us Matthew 11 28 Jesus said come unto me all ye that labor the word labor there does not mean diligence, profitless work, toiling, and a heavy leaden. He says, and I will give you rest. He never said, I will give you a job. He never said, I will give you a child. He never said, I will give you business. He said, I will give you rest. You know what that means? Whatever it is that will put you in a state of rest including the things that you do not even know you need when you come to me i will give you more than what you ask for the goal is to find rest the bible says there remained a rest for the people of god rest on all sides rest on all sides genesis 24 and verse 1 let me show you what rest roundabout looks like genesis 24 and verse 1 everybody please read together this is the Bible's definition of rest. Ready? One to read. And Abraham was old 
and well stricken in age uh -huh. and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things say all things one more time say all things rest show me a man who has chosen to be on the Lord's side forget about what you think is not in place eventually that person's life will be left a praise to the nations yes sir there were people who as at the time they came to the Lord's side there were many things that were not working in their lives maybe their marriages maybe their finances maybe their children but they were determined to stay in the Lord's side and eventually Isaac for Sarah Samuel for Hannah are we together yes Gideon became a warrior Joseph became a king Daniel was exalted to become one of the presidents when you choose the Lord's side it may have a momentary discomfort but I assure you by the God of heaven that if you make up your mind that no matter what happens I will choose the Lord's side in other words you would have been married if only you compromise your faith and follow the man just for money but you made up your mind and said I'm going to do it God's way it may cost me they may laugh at you and say you will sit down there and grow old or maybe some kind of mockery but you've made up your mind that if it is not the Lord's side I am not going you would have given bribe or you would have gone to do some things and you would have been walking by now and people look at you those who did it that you did not do will look at you and laugh at you and say you see me practicing all this and I'm being promoted I'm now a director you are still there unemployed there are times that it looks stupid to be on the Lord's side but can I tell you the Lord's side is a side of rest roundabout the Bible says mark the wicked their end is destruction so don't you just rejoice when people continue to cut corners and compromise and go forward sometimes they make believers look stupid and wicked they were sharing the money from the bribe in the office and you made up your mind that I will stand with integrity you would have gotten 10 million 100 million and you would have kept quiet nobody will know is God speaking to someone the Lord's side is the side of rest rest roundabout that a day will come they look at you and your children are well behaved because there is a covenant that keeps them in the way of the Lord and they ask you what did you do our own children are giving us headache we're almost losing sleep and your children are so obedient you are so wealthy and yet your children are not lawless and you will tell them I had an option to fast track my life and destroy my life but I made up my mind that I would choose the Lord's side are we together who is on the Lord's side ladies and gentlemen please hear me make up your mind from today and I'm going to ask you to lay your hands on your head shortly and cry that no matter what it takes I will remain on the Lord's side lay your hands on your head and begin to pray lay your hands on your head begin to pray begin to make declarations that in the name of Jesus I am on the Lord's side and no matter what it will cost me I decree and declare that I remain on the Lord's side go ahead and pray how I love to stand for you how I love to worship you and even though it hurts me for every step I take and even though it pains me for every move I make but I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I can never ever do without you pray in one minute I choose the Lord's side I may cry why standing on the Lord's side but I choose the Lord's side 
I may lose a lot of things momentarily while standing on the Lord's side, but I choose the Lord's side. I will do ministry the Lord's side. The Lord's way. I will stand on His side. I will grow wealthy standing on the Lord's side, doing it His way. Someone pray. Who is on the Lord's side? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, haven't told you the implications of being on the Lord's side. Maybe I should recap for one last time. Number one, that the Lord's side is the side of protection and preservation. Number two, the Lord's side is the side of power. Number three, the Lord's side is the side of joy or victory. Number four, the Lord's side is the side of joy and pleasure. Finally, I said the Lord's side is the side of rest round about. Now, I want to describe for you six people, six states that represent being on the Lord's side so that you will know clearly whether you're on the Lord's side or not. At the end of this discussion, there will be two groups in this place. Number one, those who are on the Lord's side indeed. Number two, those who need to migrate to be on the Lord's side. Are you ready? So who is on the Lord's side? Number one, what kind of person can we say is on the Lord's side indeed? Are you ready? Number one, one who has received the free gift of forgiveness and eternal life through Jesus. That is the first person we can say is on the Lord's side. Who is on the Lord's side, I repeat? One who has received the free gift of forgiveness and eternal life through Jesus. Received the free gift of forgiveness and eternal life not through a prophet, not through an apostle, not through a church, but through Jesus and him alone. In John chapter 1 from verse 11 and 3, we're discussing who is on the Lord's side now. The Bible says he came unto his own and his own received him not. Verse 12, let's read together. Ready one to read. But as many as received him, the Bible says to them he gave power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So who is on the Lord's side? One who has received the free gift of forgiveness. Romans chapter 5 from verse 1 and 2. Romans 5 from verse 1 and 2. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God, hallelujah, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2, it says, by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. You cannot be on the Lord's side if you have rejected Jesus. The issue of accepting Jesus his substitutionary sacrifice, obtaining forgiveness and mercy by his shed blood and then receiving of his life. It's not an issue of fanatism. It's not an issue of altar call. It's not even an issue of being a Christian. This is a call to a functional relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5 and verse 11. Please give it to us. And this is the record, the Bible says, that God had given Joshua Selman eternal life. It says, and this life is in his son. Verse 12. It says, he that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son of God hath not life. The word life is the Greek word zoe. The life of God. Not just your biological life. You can be living in as much as we know biologically and yet be dead spiritually. Hallelujah. Apostle 
how do I know that I am on the Lord's side? I have to check if you have obtained willfully and consciously forgiveness of sins. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Whether you are from whatever nation, whatever race, it doesn't matter how righteous you perceive yourself to be. The Bible says from the lens of God's eternal justice, no man that the greatest of us are righteousness are as filthy rags. So Jesus stands and makes a call that you come to him just as you are. The hymn writer says, just as I am without one plea, you come to Jesus, the Son of God, the one who gave his life for you. Are we together? Yes. Let me tell you sincerely, if you have not, if you have not made Jesus Lord of your life consciously, even if you were born by a missionary father or a prophet or an apostle, you have not chosen to be on the Lord's side. Ah. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the reef. You know why Jesus died? He did not die because he was a sinner. He died because he became sin. And all sinners are doomed to die. But rather than you doing the death out of love and sent by the Father, he died that death for you. Tasting that death, that spiritual death once and for all. The Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 16. This is not just some evangelical message. Listen very carefully. John chapter 3 and verse 16. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him. Whether you are from the east, from the west, whether you are from a family of curses, whether you are someone who has smoked and drank everything you know, it doesn't matter whosoever believes in him. The Bible says he should not perish. It's a law. Once you believe in him, there is no perishing. It says, but have eternal life, everlasting life. 17, it says, for God did not send, he sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. For there's none other name, the Bible says, under heaven given unto men. The name of Joshua Selman cannot save you. Mm -mm. The name of any apostle or prophet or man of God or government cannot bring salvation. No. There's only one God, one name that saves. And tonight he wants to save you. What does it mean to save you? That through atonement... The pain of a ransom, that ransom being his life, he has the power now to translate you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Do you know there are many people in church who are not saved? They just came around church and started listening to sermons till they became leaders. They cannot tell you, listen, growing up, you know, some of our old ones that we say they are old school, there was something, some of them used to write the date they gave their life to Christ. Remember? They can say on the 12th of January. But there are many people today, you ask them, are you saved? They say, yes. How do you know? Well, I just know that I've been around this church thing. And do you know something I have discovered? By the privilege of God's grace, I've been in this work for a while. Most people are not saved because the gospel was not really presented to them. Most people do not even know what they should believe. And respectfully speaking, let me charge preachers they have to place their faith in the message it has to be articulately communicated don't just say come out if you want to be saved from what to what so you see people come out and they are smiling while they are saying the salvation prayer or someone just walks up and says amen no sir you were not saved are we together if you're a missionary here or you're an evangelist don't go to a crusade ground and be teaching on finances don't go on a crusade ground and be teaching on marriage or teaching. No, no. The purpose of a crusade is to directly 
bring the gospel to save sinners. There are conferences. Now, I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. There are conferences and believer meetings that can now zoom to various dimensions of kingdom living and strengthen people. But listen, once you are on a crusade ground, the mission is that Jesus will turn many to righteousness. I can't teach you, I can't just talk to you for hours and hours on wealth and prosperity. And then, I, I mean, if, if I'm teaching, of course, I will make the altar call regardless what I'm saying. But even if it's in two minutes, I will say something. The message is very simple. You don't need Rema or Greek or Hebrew. Jesus wants the message to get to the ends of the earth. So he took away the complication. Ina Yesu ne bazan koma bazan koma baya ma Ina Yesu ne bazan koma bazan koma baya ma na sahanu na akan keke koma I belong to Jesus, never going back, never going So you find many people who tell you they are saved. You cannot see the evidence of salvation. They've not met Jesus. Of course, I've taught you, when you meet Jesus, it doesn't mean you are automatically transformed. Are we together now? But that you have received that life, the capacity to now begin the process of transformation. Many people in our churches are not saved. I don't say this from a standpoint of sarcasm. That's the reason why you see many people are given leadership positions who have not met Jesus. And they keep making the work of the kingdom difficult because they were never saved. You lay hands and lay hands and lay hands and nothing happens because there is an eternal access for spirits to remain. And return back again. People fall down and stand up, fall down and stand up. There are others you can lay everything you have to receive the Holy Ghost. They will receive because they are not saved. Listen, let me tell you this. And don't just think this is a preacher's fanatism. Make sure everybody around you is saved. Are your children saved? No, they are, they are, they are, you know how I am. I don't want any controversy. No. This issue, we have to return back with the passion that we, the passion that brought us to the fold. This is not about being an evangelist or a missionary. It's about being passionate enough to love people. When you see a poor wire wanting to fall down on someone, do you need to be related to the person to save the person? I know we have downplayed the message of salvation in church, for instance, and we say, no, 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 don't say anything that threatens people. Let them not feel condemned. Listen, this is not about feeling condemned. There is a real hell. There are people going there. And there are more people who will go there. Are we together now? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will, he will convict the world of three things. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. The purpose of being saved is not just for a good life. The purpose of being saved is not just for prosperity. Those things are the, 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 the after effects of walking with God. Is the reason why even those who are saved at the slightest show of disappointment, like the Moses generation, they will start building idols and say, you, are, you told me if I'm saved in two weeks, I will have a car. In two weeks, I will have a house. Now I'm saved these five years. No nothing. I'm going back. The Moses generation. Hallelujah. Apostle, what do I do now that I have children that look like they will not be saved? Start with intercession. I have taught you. We live in a world where you can't go and stop someone and begin to waylay them. People have rights. And even God respects their will. So I'm not talking about isolating people and being fanatical and bullying people and then being antagonistic to people of other religions or other race. This is not what I'm teaching you. The least you can do is to begin to intercede. Write their names. Bring it for miracle service. Write their names before you write a car. Write their names before you write a husband. Write their names before you write promotion. 
father saved many of you follow the uk conference i'm sure you saw one of the women who was jumping at the miracle of salvation most people it would take going to heaven and seeing it from the realm of the spirit to know the power of salvation that saul can be turned to paul that Cephas can be turned to Peter. Who told you God cannot save your husband? Have you prayed? Do you know the power that raised Christ from the dead? How were you when he saved you? Apostle, you don't know what I've done with my life. It does not matter. Apostle, you don't know the kind of husband I married. When I married him, I was not saved. This man drinks anything he finds. Oh, this man is an occultic man. He does, he has, he's, he's in a fraternity that I know. Don't belittle the power of God. You just begin to pray. Invest in intercession. Father, my husband will not go to hell. Lord, this is my child that has vowed that he will not love the Lord. What it takes is one solid encounter. You see him, this God we serve, most people don't respect him. They just believe in him. The day God chooses to answer mama's prayer, what he will do to that son, Listen, before Jesus Christ comes, there are many people who are in the beer parlor today. Tomorrow you will see them on a crusade ground and say, this, is this not the same person? Someone's intercession has brought the person to Jesus. Are we together? You are not a Christian, I'm telling you sincerely. If the passion, if the passion for souls die in your life is a greater attack than an att attack on your prayer life, we have used other indices today. People, people who don't have a passion for souls, but have a passion for prayer, have a passion for anointing. They call themselves matured Christians. Go and read the Bible and see the indices that show passion and love for God. Peter, loveth me thou more than this. He said, feed my lamb. Let me, let me see the level of love you have for me by, by your, your passion for souls. Not just your passion for anointing. Not just your passion for prayer or for revelation. Those things are wonderful. But there are many people who want the anointing. They want prayer just for flesh. So that they can rise to be famous. When you win souls, it doesn't look like it's very marketable. The souls will not give you anything. They will not reward you. You're, you will not be famous. I'm praying that God will restore our passion. In the name of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be on the Lord's side? I'm just on number one, no? This the, the, the this is I'm describing the kind of people who are on the Lord's side. This is number one. One who has received the free gift of forgiveness. The high point of our crusade in the UK was when we made the altar call and we saw people running to Jesus. I'm telling you, that thing does something to me. Hallelujah. Should I make an altar call now? Yes, it's a very good idea to make an altar call right now. Because you strike when the iron is hot. Many of you, as you are hearing me now, I just, I proposed Jesus to you. Listen, have you ever wondered why you hate Jesus? For some of you, maybe. Have you ever wondered why it looks like you are not serious about these things of God? If it's football, yes. Other things, yes. But the moment you mention Jesus, because there is a spirit that knows that when you come to the Lord's side, he can begin to rewrite your story. I hope you know, you may be jumping now because you are 18 years, 19 years, 25 years. You will not always be 25 years. And whether you like it or not, as age comes, there are things that will fade away. And at the end of your life, certain things you were playing with, jumping around, I'm telling you that immaturity will fade away. And most of the people who are playing and wasting your destiny with you, I'm not condemning you. Some of them will be old. Some of them will die. Some of them will waste your time and then quietly go and repent later on. Listen to me. The Bible says that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. What does it mean to be saved? It means number one, to believe. 
that Jesus actually walked upon the earth. He came from heaven as an incarnate of the Father. What does it mean to receive Jesus? That you believe that his purpose of coming was as a revelation of the Father's love. That he came and died being the penalty for death because it is written, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And since we are all sinners, based on God's justice system, we all should die. But Jesus now came as an expression of love that instead of all doing that death ourselves he will put that death on himself and die the death for us that if you believe in that substitutionary sacrifice the first thing you are granted is forgiveness of sins by atonement the second thing you have is access to his life righteousness the ability to stand in the presence of the father without a sense of inferiority a sense of guilt a sense of condemnation you have access to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is every man that hangeth upon the tree, that the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, might come upon we the Gentiles, to the end that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So apostle, now that I've heard you, where do I start? That right where you are seated, in this auditorium and in all the overflows outside and following across the globe the first thing you have to do is to believe that i'm not lying to you the first thing you have to do is to believe that this preacher who is speaking to you is speaking from a standpoint of love the second thing you need to do is to act out your belief by faith the bible says in romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 are we together now? It says that the word is nigh thee, even in your mouth and your heart. The word of faith that we preach. The next verse says that if thou shalt confess with your mouth, your mouth has a role to play in your being saved. And it says to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Then it says thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's a Greek word soteria salvation all kinds of salvation but in this case the salvation of your soul i want to be sure that you are saved being on the lord's side primarily means that you have made this choice to say apostle i have an option to reject jesus i have an option to choose whatever i want to do it's my life this is the generation that likes that statement it's true that it's your life but one day you will learn that you were created. Are we together? So when you come to stand here in total surrender, what do you stand to receive? You are standing before Jesus and you are giving your life and your destiny. Look at me, please. Did you know that for some of you in making your, 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 your confession of faith to Jesus, everybody who comes out of you will almost naturally follow the God that you know. When a man is not saved, he will become a father that is not saved. He will become a husband that is not saved. He will produce a family that is not saved, which will contribute to making a society that is not saved and will make a nation that is not saved. When a woman is not saved, she will become a mother that does not care. What, 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 whatever her daughters become, it does not matter. Tonight, throw away that it does not matter. Let me make an altar call before we continue. There's no need to, to coerce anyone. Please, everybody listen to me. This is a matter of life and death. This is a matter of Jesus. You are here and you've listened to me. And while you listen to me, for so some of you are saying, I, I've never heard it this way. I didn't know this is the good news is that you do not have to pay the price of your sins by yourself again. The eternal father sent his son He's paid the price. Your assignment is to believe. And that in believing, you receive eternal life. The very life of God. I'm going to make an altar call. Tonight, I want somebody who is bold. Tonight, I want somebody who is determined. Tonight, I want somebody who has cried in the secret but laughed in the open as if everything is all right. Tonight, I want somebody who comes from a family where no one has risen. You know that you may not be serious with God, but you know, you see the activity of demon spirits around your life and your family. The way out is not counseling. Counseling comes later. The way out is not convincing yourself that there is no evil. 
the way of escape is Jesus now you see I don't have to force you you can make up your mind to listen to me and say wow this preacher I'm glad that you know what you're saying and yet not make that response mine is to stand in partnership with the Spirit of God who is the Lord of the harvest and propose to you Jesus again perhaps you have been here you watch other people come you watch the conference you saw people say but maybe you've not been convinced can you win that war right now whether you are outside or inside I'm going to count one to five and without looking and waiting for anyone to be the first I want somebody tonight who is bold and serious and saying for the sake of my children I will make this decision I came from a family where no one made this decision they had their chance begin to run out and come and stand here one two come don't be ashamed don't mind who is looking at you come to Jesus yes sir come come apostle I come from the east come I come from the west come I don't even know who my father is you're welcome come he is truly able to give you a new beginning your grace has found me just as I am empty-handed but alive in your hands come to Jesus majesty majesty forever I am changed by your love in the presence of your majesty don't be ashamed of your tears come majesty Listen, years ago, I went to preach in a particular campus many years ago. And when I preached, I made an altar call like this. It was, I think, during their missions program. And then among the many people who came was a gentleman in that place. And just joining the crowd like many people here, he lifted his hands. A few years later, he would invite me. He had now become the campus fellowship president. A vibrant gentleman who was now serving God spearheading revival within his campus I was so blessed and elated when I saw him and last I last I heard from him he was still on fire loving the Lord you never can tell how far listen please look at me my dear people we are not acting here some of you while you are standing here heaven is rejoicing because this is what God told those who went before you to say the cure to this cause this backwardness in the family the cure is Jesus no matter what kind of job you get minus Jesus it will backfire eventually I assure you Apostle, I always want to come, but church has condemned me. They made it look like the way my life is, I am so filthy. Don't worry, don't feel bad. I apologize on behalf of those who did it. Maybe they did it sincerely based on how they were mentored. But you see, let me tell you, the Bible says that everyone who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Rebels don't come to Jesus. Rebels run away from Jesus. The fact that you made a bold step to come here is a sign that the Holy Spirit is already working in your heart. And let me tell you, no matter how far you have been, right now he's ready to make it right with you. Are we together you are like that prodigal son that prodigal daughter let me lead you some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears everybody who is sincerely saved had a point in his life where they made this decision I'm talking of genuine salvation that transforms you truly may I please request that you lift your right hand all of you as a sign of surrender to Jesus and perhaps someone is lifting his hands right there in your room you're watching by your electronic device you're watching by television you're watching a rebroadcast it does not matter you can start afresh you can start right now 
the business of Jesus provided you are life it is never too late the Bible says today if you hear his voice to harden not your heart like they did in the wilderness lift your right hand don't be ashamed the tears are a sign of surrender they mean you are giving up on yourself to embrace a greater life the tears mean I have trusted other things the meaning of your Christ be magnified oh Lord You are highly exalted And there is nothing you can't do Oh Lord, my eyes are on you Be magnified Oh My dear brothers and sisters, I salute you. Please say this prayer after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Jesus. Let him hear you. He's here. Say, Jesus. I have come to you tonight just as I am. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive you into my heart as my lord as my savior and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight until forever i am a child of god i go from glory to glory Amen. Keep your hands lifted and witness the power of salvation. I declare by the integrity of scripture that your sins are forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, I call you recipients of the life of God. I decree and declare that every guilt, every hurt, every shame of the past or whatever it is that the devil is bringing by the blood, we erase it right now. And I declare that from tonight, you begin to walk in righteousness in the name of jesus and i just feel scared to pray one prayer every spirit that followed you here that might be responsible for any addictions or anything keeping you back i command now let them go out now in the name of jesus out of their lives for the gospel is the power of god unto salvation release them now in the name of jesus every generational curse every yoke that sat upon those who went ahead of them and wants to manipulate them into a life of failure satan you heard their confession therefore by the blood of the eternal covenant release them now in the name of jesus for the bible says he who the son sets free is free indeed i declare your liberty you are free indeed in the name of jesus christ This life that I have is the life of Christ in me. This life that I have is the life of God. This life that I have is the life of God. That's what you just received the indestructible life of God thank you very much for making this bold decision here's what I want you to do the service is still ongoing but please lend me two or three minutes of your time I want you to please move to my right you see the counselors waving the placard all of you in concert as we clap and celebrate you please be mindful of the um, they will have a word with you very quickly and you'll be back let's celebrate them as they go is this the best you can do hallelujah Ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing the power of the gospel. 
when it is articulately communicated and backed up by the power of God. It is not like people are so rebellious. It is that most times we are not taking time to preach the gospel because we ourselves do not understand what Jesus did. Do you know a preacher can be ministry for many years and yet not study what redemption is all about? I submit to you without sounding arrogant. There are many preachers, if we are called to line up and say, give us a rundown in point from point one, the whole discourse of salvation, you will be surprised how many of us preach in conferences and shout, I'm Apostle Joshua Selman, and yet cannot articulate the gospel. It's like a doctor that does not understand the human body. It's like a doctor who is practicing and does not even know how to give an injection. These are the basics. How did you get there in the first place? So if you're a man of God here, please listen to me. I submit to you and I'm saying it because I love you. And it's time for the body of Christ to mature. Leave the issue of study of Greek and Hebrew, nine ways to do this. Go and study salvation. What has Jesus done? Understand it first. You only teach and mature people who are saved. Don't waste your time trying to teach and getting into deeper spiritual things over people who have not even encountered Jesus. I'm still on number one, don't forget. And we must finish the six of them. Let's hurry up. Are we together? So who is on the Lord's side? Number one, one who has received the free gift of forgiveness and eternal life through Jesus. Are you ready for number two? Who is on the Lord's side? Number two, one who has chosen to honor the leadership of the Holy Spirit in his life. Please write it down. How do I know that I am on the Lord's side? By your degree of submission to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. Please listen to this message again. Send it to someone that you know and you love. It says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. It says, now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, help me, he is none of his. That means if you do not have the spirit of Christ and if you are not submitting to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to guide us. Listen to my teachings on the Holy Spirit. You can get them on Koinonia Global. I teach essentially that the Holy Spirit has a threefold ministry. He has a ministry to creation. He has a ministry to unbelievers. He has a ministry to believers. His ministry to creation is that he's the life force. He is the very factor that keeps everything alive as we know. Withdraw the Holy Spirit and still leave the sun and the air. Creation will die. Number two, his ministry to unbelievers is the ministry of conviction and conversion. That he convicts men of sin, of righteousness and judgment, and then he engenders the administration of salvation. His ministry to believers is threefold. The ministry of activating your spiritual organs. We call it being alive unto God. Then the ministry of revelation bringing you insight and illumination then the ministry of empowerment there are others like the ministry of guidance you know and all of these things get it and listen to it very carefully are we together who is on the lord's side one who has chosen to honor the leadership of the holy spirit romans chapter 8 from verse 14 to 17 romans 8 Romans 8 14 to 17 for as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are what the sons of God reading to 17 for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption he is called whereby we cry Abba father 16 the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. In other words, that we are on the Lord's side. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. Let's rush. Number three. Who is on the Lord's side? One who has chosen to submit. Please write. One who has chosen to submit 
to the supremacy of the word of God in all matters. Who is on the Lord's side, especially in these end times? One who has chosen to submit to the supremacy of the word of God in all matters. The supremacy, that means the word of God takes preeminence in all and every matter of your life. It is one of the characteristics, uh, characteristic definitions of a Christian. One who has submitted to the authority, the supremacy of the word of God. That what the direction of the word of God is where you go. You live by the word. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Submitting to the supremacy of the word of God in all matters. It is one of the biblical indices for even measuring spiritual maturity. You are spiritually mature to the degree to which you have allowed the word of God to govern your life. That your life is, is totally under the influence of the word of God. You have made up your mind to walk and to live in keeping with the word of God. Are we together? Number four. Are you ready for this? Who is on the Lord's side? Number four. One who has chosen to live a life of consecration and sacrifice. Write that down. And don't assume, please, that you know what I'm saying. Just write and listen. Number four. One who has chosen to live a life of consecration and sacrifice. Second Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14 to 18. He says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness? Uh-huh. We're reading to 18. And what concord has Christ with Belial? And what part has he that believeth with an infidel? 16. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. And as God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people 17 wherefore it says come out from among them this is the definition of consecration come out from among them and be ye separate not be ye critical not be ye sarcastic come out from among them and be ye separate said the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you verse 18 it says and I will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and my daughters saith the Lord God Almighty please look up for many believers the idea of consecration is only to come out of a life of sin and that is very important but I have taught you that consecration is beyond the issue of sin. There are many good things. Look up, please. If you walk with God, there are many things that are not sinful and evil that you will still need to come out of. In, 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 are we together now? Consecration is not just a matter of what is bad or sinful. No. There are many things. It is, it is the constraining power. To be able to honor and keep your call, your mantle, your mandate. So there are many people who are not sinful, but they are not consecrated. Let me tell you the truth. One of the characteristic features of consecration is that you cannot say yes to everything. And including good things. This is what many people don't like. Evil things, fine. That's, that's fine. But there are many things. It says all things are lawful. But not all things are expedient. I hope you like what I'm teaching. Let me show you two more scriptures. Who is on the Lord's side? Consecration. First John chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17. Apostle John now. Love not the world. I've taught it here. Is the Greek word eros. An ungodly affinity. He's not saying don't have money or don't have material possession. People have erroneously thought that, that was, that's what he was saying. No, no, not at all. Neither the things that are in the world. Look up, please. If any man loves the world, he says the love of the Father is not in him. What are the things? He categorizes everything in the world 
into three one the lust of the flesh two the lust of the eyes three the pride of life he says is not of the father but is of the world 17 he says give us 17 please and the world passed away and the lost thereof he says but he that doeth the will of god abideth forever please look up how do i know that i am on the lord's side if it is the god of the bible you are walking with as you begin to walk with god and the more you rise there are certain constraints that god will start putting in your life some of them may not be general constraints I'm explaining to you the full extent of what it means to be consecrated. Can I tell you, especially if you're a ministry, I want you to listen here. Every call and every anointing has a consecration that protects it. If you are Samson, beware of your hair. If you are Elijah, beware of your prayer life. Are we together now? It's not just enough to say, I want a double portion. I want, if you receive a man's anointing and do not study the consecration to keep it, you will lose it. You will lose it for sure. God can become so meticulous about your life that he will even put certain constraints in your life. It may not be a general rule for everybody. For instance, do you know because of the nature of your work, the nature of your call, and the dealings of God with you, God can give you an instruction and say for you and your wife, you shouldn't have more than two children. Now, it was the same God who said be fruitful, but he has weighed you from the lens of destiny, and he has seen that your best position for efficiency is with two children. You can choose to disobey him and have, you know, whatever number. And then you will find out that that act of disobedience will become a weight. So the Bible says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, it says, let us lay aside two things. Number one, every weight. Then number two, the sin. Number one, every weight. Number two, the sin. Most believers focus on the sin part and they don't focus on the weight part. That's why you see, if, if you are really walking with God, please let me have your attention. Do you know why God will often ask you to make ridiculous sacrifices as you walk with him? It's not that God wants the money or the car. Why would God sit down and say, empty your bank account? What does he want to do with the money? There is something he's doing to you. He's breaking that hold. He can bring back the money. Why will he call Abraham and say, sacrifice Isaac? Why didn't he just say, look, Abraham, I want you to be serious with me. No. I do not know one man who is mightily used by God who did not go through the school of consecration and sacrifice. I cannot begin to tell you the things I have laid down for this God. There are some of you, if it's the issue of sin, with speed, oh, I love you, Lord Jesus. But the moment he begins to make a demand, that salary as he just entered, Give it to me. I rebuke that wicked spirit that wants me to suffer in this month of May. And God says, you see, huh. sacrifice. A time will come in the realm of the spirit where the only access code to a new dimension is sacrifice. Blood dripping on your altar. I know you may not like what you are hearing, but I love you too much to not tell you the truth. Sincerely. People admire power. People admire all kinds. When they see God walking with people at certain dimensions. No. You want a life of miracles, signs and wonders. It's not just about reading scripture and saying, I believe. No. Try it. It won't work. There is a sacrifice. Let the fire from your altar touch my heart. Let the fire from your altar touch my heart. Let the fire from your altar touch my heart. That's what it takes to be on the Lord's side. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth. Oh, speak from the heavens, and I'll hear from the earth. 
my sacrifice is calling you, oh God, my sacrifice is calling you, oh God. Can I tell you what it means to be consecrated? To get to a point where there is nothing in your life you cannot give up for God. And until you get to that realm, I submit to you, there are certain levels of business you cannot do with God. This is not about impartation or just I believe. No, you've heard me. The price for all of God is all of you. All of you. Apostle, I'm a man of God. I want the Lord to give me the keys of nations. <laughs> when Peter and, and James met, you know, their mother met Jesus and said, Grant that when you have restored all things my sons will sit down at your left and right he said the space is available but can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism who is on the lord's side the person who makes up his mind that whatever it will take if I will lose myself and my ego and my honor for him, so be it. If I will lose my reputation for his majesty, so be it. If all my crowns and my achievements fall like Dagon before the ark for his sake, so be it. I'm teaching you authentic Bible consecration. Now, let me tell you one truth. God is not interested in anything you own. He's interested in his space and his position in your life. So when he touches those things, it's because he has found out that those things, you have allowed those things to grow. The relationship, the money, you started becoming a celebrity and celebrity mindset exalted you. You pushed God and sat on the throne. So when he begins, when God says, so your finances, or what does it do? What, what, what will he do with the money? He said, if, if I need something, is it you? I'll come and ask to give me. Please hear me. I'm saying this because some of you are in a season of pruning and dealing. It looked like it, everything God is stripping you naked. And you are saying, God, is it that you want to disgrace me? I'm explaining to you what he's doing. He's bringing you to the Lord's side. Who is on the Lord's side? One who has died truly to himself. That you can hold a billion naira. And God says, give it for me. And you say, your majesty, if it is for you, I lay it down. You get to a point where absolutely nothing can take his place. That is the realm you will see wealth that you have never seen. You will see levels of the anointing that you cannot be able to explain. Let me tell you, for as long as you are still using God to build an empire, for as long as you are still using God to build church, as long as you are still using the name of Jesus like a bribe to build a reputation for yourself, I submit to you and trust me, I know what I'm saying. You see what the Lord did across in Manchester? I know that people will see these things and say, wow, it's just the grace of God. I agree. But from a standpoint of consecration, don't downplay what consecration can do. You will would, you would use formulas and it will not work. But when you die, he comes to resurrect you by himself. So that anything he gives you is his own. You've heard me teach you that the reason why you put your money in the bank is not because you know the bank manager. In fact, it's not even because you like the bank. You put your money in the bank because the day you need it, they can give you. Am I right on that? The day you go to the bank and say, give me my one million, and they tell you stories, you will report them. This is what causes banks to go down. That there are so many customers who want to withdraw their monies, and it looks like for whatever reason, they cannot give them. If you place one billion in the bank, you are happy. If somebody transfers money, he did not put it in your pocket, but he sent it to an account that the bank gave you, and you are happy. You start rejoicing. I've gotten money. Was, is, is the bank your own? But it's because you know the ease of withdrawal was where your confidence came from. That's the same thing with God. The moment everything he has 
that he gives you remains his own in experience ladies and gentlemen you will lay up gold as dust trust me there are many of you who have tried this prosperity thing and it's not working sometimes you need to just close those books and lie down on the ground it's not just by no wealth in this kingdom is a trust it's not an achievement other people can say, I achieved this. But there are people, he, he gave on to some, five. He gave on to some, two. Is somebody listening to me? Yes. Consecration. Who is on the Lord's side? The one who can say, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you and mean what you are saying my life is not my own that means your ministry too that means the children too that means the house and cars when you say my life you can't say my my spirit is not my own but my bank account is my own my life means everything in my life this language of my thing my business my money if you mean that in terms of administration and all of that i understand but in terms of ownership is the mistake of the rich fool get my teaching the rich young ruler a clarion call for this generation Who is on the Lord's side one who has decided that everything I have belongs to him that what he wants is what I do have your way Lord have your way have your way Lord don't sing it if you don't believe it have your way, Lord. Have your way, oh Lord. See, the people you admire today that we call fathers that are being used, these were the songs that they sang when they had nothing. They rolled on the floor shouting that song and they meant it. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. Oh, Lord. What is the meaning of this point? That for every time you walk with God, you have an assignment to search whether there is an idol growing in your heart. You don't have to be evil. You can give birth to children and all of a sudden that child can become an idol. You can get married and that marriage becomes an idol. You can win some kind of contract. Five billion, ten billion. And that's the end of it. You and God. God, I will come back to your side when I finish the contract. And for us men of God, by the time God begins to lift you, listen to my message at the conference. I thought that there's something called the human cycle. Every time there is abundance and increase and rest, men usually become careless and complacent. Then they go down to a state of slumber and decadence as a natural result of comfort. And then in that point, they forget God and usually they are consequently given to the hands of their enemies and then in the midst of their pain they are languishing they now begin to call upon the god of heaven he will usually send a prophet to warn them and say you have left your your way with me and they will repent with brokenness and genuine repentance and then he will bring them redemption then they get back to abundance then the cycle continues Every time God is lifting you, be careful. 
because you are already at the corridors of falling the higher you rise the easier it is to fall because at that point what is there now I'm a big man I'm a big woman I have my estates millionaire my name is known all over I hope God is speaking to us number five who is on the Lord's side can I continue one who has chosen to be an active part of God's kingdom advancement agenda one who has chosen to be an active part of God's kingdom advancement slash end time agenda you can write it there one who has chosen to be a part of God's kingdom advancement slash end time agenda Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8 one who has chosen to be a part of God's end time agenda this was Isaiah the prophet going through his dealings with God and he said also I heard the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send and who shall go for us then Isaiah said here am I send me we use this for missionaries when we are looking for people to go to the mission field or to go to villages. But it's not about missionaries alone. He's saying which vessel because I am God but I need human vessels who will avail themselves for my purposes to come to pass. And maybe I should just digress for a minute or two and teach you that the agenda of God, I have taught you this. When we talk about the project Kingdom Come or what we call Kingdom Advancement, can I define it for you? Kingdom Advancement refers to, listen before you write, Kingdom Advancement refers to every uh, and any scriptural mechanism that is deployed to enthrone Christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men then across every strata of human activities this is what we call kingdom advance so when you say you are advancing the kingdom it doesn't just mean you are preaching or it doesn't just mean you are giving money to church it is that every scriptural mechanism that can be deployed that ultimately leads to the enthroning of Christ in the hearts of men are we together now and then seeing that Christ is enthroned across the strata of human activities and to achieve that God decided to make kingdom advance which is the same thing with his end time agenda the the, the program is threefold number one the first dimension of that kingdom agenda that you see is world evangelization that means saving the lost that is the first dimension it is in order of priority the most important but it's not the, on, the only the, the only program so world evangelization number two is the equipping of the saints this is the second program because the church is God's battle acts the equipping of the saints then number three the transformation of society are you seeing it now so world evangelization the equipping of the saints then the saints that are now equipped and empowered start transforming society that's where we talk of the seven mountains now the mountain of religion the mountain of family the mountain of education the mountain of arts and entertainment the mountain of media the mountain of uh, what else again finance all those mountains people who are sent as sheep among wolves so you talk of the professionals the architects you talk of the, the the doctors and lawyers the politicians all the witnesses generally but in order of priority society is at the mercy of the transformation of the church so the believer world evangelization unbelievers become believers discipleship and equipping the saints now turn new believers into matured believers people who are of stature and stamina who are empowered they are now sent equipped with understanding and they they penetrate systems and structures and they enthrone the purposes of christ maybe i should say a word or two about the concept of what 
we have come to know in the body of Christ, and I'm, I'm being respectful about this, but I think it's good that since I'm speaking on this point of kingdom advance, I understand a bit on this point, and I submit to you that I think many preachers really do not understand the full import of what we call God's end time agenda. We have all kinds of ideas, and one of the most popular ideas is the concept of takeover. Maybe I should say a word about that. I've had it being used sincerely so, and, and there are people who know what they're saying. But um, listen to me, believers. When we talk about the idea of taking over systems and structures, let me tell you what we mean, and let me tell you what we do not mean. We do not mean magically that from a physical standpoint, that one day, you know, the West, the developed first world nation will suddenly... You know, Africa will magically just become like that. When we talk about takeover, it's a spiritual language. Listen, as far as territorial transformation is concerned, there are two things that God is interested in. Number one, the spirits of men. Second, their minds. Are we together now? The physical manifestation is a natural resultant effect of that. So when we are talking about taking over, we are not just talking about building industries alone and building houses and, you know, making Nigeria a modern Dubai. And No, 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 no. That, that, is, that, is, that is quite a mundane approach. The idea is the health of the spirits of men, then causing them to now sustain superior beliefs because the God of this world has an assignment to blind the minds of the people. Are we together now? I hope you know Jesus is coming soon. I doubt that we are going to live, perhaps, but I doubt that we are going to live maybe for the next 50 years or so. I really doubt. With the unfolding of events, so I'm not prophesying. And this is not a doctrine. It's just a discussion with my people. Are we together now? If you are together, say amen. amen. I really doubt because following the prophetic signposts that were given to us in scripture, we are already at the last phase of everything. That is the truth. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness. What happened in UK, what is happening across the globe is a testament that we are nearing the end of the end. Do you believe what you're hearing? And there are many of us here, the idea we have is that God just brought you through your parents and now that you're an adult, probably married with children, we have no definition as to what we're doing with our lives. And we feel that the only way to just bribe God to feel we still remember him is to come to church. But there is nothing pro-kingdom in our lives. The entire circumference of our lives is about the pursuit of money and the pursuit of whatever it is. I recommend for such people my teaching, What Seekest Thou? Please write it and look for it. You'll find it on Koinonia Global and listen to it very carefully. There I teach on the concept of true fulfillment and we examine a few things that in, in our wild quest, as we wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night, Sadly for many, only to eat the bread of sorrow, that there are so many things we are looking for. Listen, there, is an exact, there are exact activities on earth that an individual must be engaged in to find fulfillment. And the endless quest for financial resources was never supposed to be God's design for man. That is, that is uh, 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 and, and, uh, and I say this respectfully speaking, it cannot be God's idea that the moment you become an adult, for the rest of your life, as long as you breathe, you're looking for money. And then I look for money, then build a house, then finally just find out to my surprise that I am old. And then in regret and anger, I now begin to do all kinds of things and then you pass on. That does not look like an intelligent God's God, uh, 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 God's, God's idea. God's idea is that we know him, access through the keys of the kingdom, the resources that make us to live excelling lives. Then they now grant us the comfort to face the matter of the kingdom. You do not have to be a preacher 
This is not about preachers. Listen to my message, redefining the coming revival. Every one of us has a role to play. What you call your purpose is simply the role you have to play in that big picture. And you will never find true fulfillment until you find it. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written concerning me. For some of you, your singular assignment on earth is that God will lift you. You will become so powerful financially and make significant contributions towards kingdom come. Your first assignment, if that is your mandate, is to understand the economic system of the kingdom and then engage it until you become truly wealthy and then get to work. For some of you, you're sent to the fivefold apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Your assignment is to know God, pass through a methodical mentorship, go through your dealing with God, and then begin to unfold your mandates as they come. For some of you, you are empowered by God to penetrate the systems and structures. Maybe through your career, God wants you to rise to an executive position and there use your influence alongside the results that has come from your life to promote the course of the kingdom. Your own assignment there will be now to excel, to go for secular knowledge and press to the highest level that now grants you capacity. But by all means, you must find out the role that you have to play. There is absolutely nobody here who does not have a part to play. And like I have taught you, if you do not play your part, it's like a relay. You know how a relay is? When you are running, someone is waiting to collect the baton and you delay another person's destiny. Imagine if our father in the Lord, Baba Deboye, did not discover his place in life. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to someone who is on the Lord's side? One who has chosen to be an active part of God's kingdom advancement agenda. You can pray, you can win souls, you can make active contributions as a financial apostle, you can excel in your career to attain onto a position of influence and use your influence like Daniel, use your influence like Joseph, use your influence like Esther. Listen, I want you to open this Bible and find where it is written concerning you. You will look at your life and you will find a parallel. If God has called you to be Esther, find Esther and study Esther. If God has called you to be John, find John. There will be a parallel of your assignment in scripture. When you find it, then be serious. If your assignment is Esther, make sure you, your, first, your first preparation is to be a good woman. So that when you get there, you will be able to support the program of God. If your assignment is Deborah, being good is not enough. You must understand the art of war because you are going to be a warrior. If you are Elijah, then you must master the art of prayer and the prophetic. If you are Daniel and you are praying alone, you are going to fail because what will exalt you is your excellence. Your prayer will be a personal affair that secures you. But what the nation will recognize you for is your intelligence and your excellence. An excellent spirit is what branded Daniel. Are we together? Let me give us the last one so we pray. Who is on the Lord's side? One who has chosen to walk in humility as a lifestyle. I like this. James 4, 6. Who is on the Lord's side? One who has chosen to walk in humility. Let's read it together. One, two, go. But he giveth more grace. Uh -huh. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. Look at me, ladies and gentlemen. What does it mean to resist? To resist means to push away, to stop from coming close or to stop from making progress. The Bible says that is what will happen to any man who decides to be proud. Let me give you a kind counsel. The moment God begins to lift you, whether financially 
or in business or in ministry i want you to be intentional about being and remaining humble one of the greatest ways to be and to remain on the lord's side is humility let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus i know that the world has celebrated us over the historic feat that you know happened in 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 uk and we thank god for that we do not downplay that but i pray for you like i pray for myself that may success never enter you to a point that you forget that god is a doer of this say amen, amen. shout a loud amen. amen i'm praying for myself and i'm praying for our global family it's good to celebrate jesus and he will keep lifting us and doing so many things but ladies and gentlemen humility is powerful humility is a retainer of honor when you practice humility you retain your honor pride is one of the fastest ways of losing anything God gives you anything I don't care what it is There are many people today who cannot be trusted with anything from God. You know why? Because of this arrogance. I am a millionaire. I'm a billionaire. Now you can see it. My houses and my cars, we say. I'm a man of God, having global influence across the globe. Especially when you have results to show. If you are proud and you don't have results, you are a fool. That one is not even pride. That's foolishness. Are we together? But there's something called the pride of life. The pride of life is where you have obvious results. You know, people, you can't contest against results. Once you have your results like a report card, you now have the credence to be proud. But I'm praying for you again, that as he lifts you, as he blesses you, as he prospers you, as he announces you, may you by humility remain on the Lord's side. Watch this. The greatest miracle recorded in the Bible was Jesus' own resurrection from the dead. Not his raising others from the dead. His own rising from the dead by himself. And when Jesus rose up from the dead, I mean, you would think that Jesus should make news and blast it and drum it to everybody's head and go to the temple where he once flogged people and go everywhere. But as soon as he got up, you know where he went to? Straight he went to the disciples greeted them said touch my hands do this and that and they got to walk 40 more days he was teaching them because he was soon to leave finally the greatest enemy of great people is their current level of achievement now i'm not teaching you to downplay you see philemon 1 and verse 6 says that the communication of your faith might be effectual philemon 1 and 6 philemon 1 6 that the communication of your faith might be effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So it is not humility to refuse to acknowledge. If God has blessed you, he has blessed you. If you are doing a good job, you are doing a good job. There is nothing wrong in celebrating the hand of God. But humility is where all the praises come to you and you lift it up and take it up. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. That's the quality of true humility. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. Beyond Joshua Selman, beyond Koinonia. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Hallelujah. So, when you receive a prophetic word here and God opens a door for you, you suddenly become a multi-millionaire, you become a billionaire. Remember, humility is the wisdom of great men. That's what keeps them. It's what brings longevity to your impact. You see, there is a natural temptation to want to rub it in. Where are all those who did not believe in me? Now that I'm a great man, let me slap it to your face. For No, 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 no. It's unnecessary. When Joseph became great, there was no need proving any point. If you are great, bar, 
you are great if god has given you this thing he has given you it's as simple as that if you are rich you are rich if you are poor uh, you can be rich but, but at that point of course you are not i'm 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 trying to not speak negative but i'm just saying if god has given you he has given you it's as simple as that all this bragging and shouting and trying to raise dust and build a crown to yourself my greatest joy in all the announcement and by the way let me say thank you to all those who acknowledge what jesus did through us published it yonder i mean i'm not on social media but i heard the remarkable work my greatest joy is that Jesus was glorified through that process unfortunately whether you like it or not to lift up Jesus you are the one who is first lifted then if you are wise enough you now lift him above you and if he sees that you lift him above you if he wants to go higher how will he go higher by lifting you more you see how it works so don't be surprised when you are lifted I'm saying we because remember I taught you that everything that happens is not Joshua Selman. I didn't go to UK. We went to UK. I didn't heal the sick. God healed the sick through us. And I mean what I'm saying. Your prayers, your giving, your sacrifice added to all that. Who is on the Lord's side? One who will choose in the midst of plenty and great, in the midst of glitz and glamour, in the midst of a celebrity life, in the midst of global recognition, to still remember to let your knees touch the ground, to acknowledge that he is good. For me, I've made up my mind as a principle and as a covenant that for the rest of my life, no matter where he leads me, no matter what he does through my life, it is an honor to serve his purposes for the many people my phone was full of so you can imagine and for for the few that I could respond to I would just tell them it's an honor and a privilege to be used by God hallelujah a life of humility apostle but we are we are really proud in our family repent repent there's no such thing as that take the stage Lord have your way I'm just a vessel and nothing more when you're done done announcing us please take the glory I'm satisfied just to see you Lay your hands on your head and cry for the grace for genuine humility. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Lord, work on my tendencies for being arrogant. It is, it is, it is resident within me. The Lord tested you with a little result. A dimension of the anointing and arrogance will not even let you grow I want you to pray please pray cry from your heart no matter how much you lift me it will be to your glory no matter how much you give me it will be to your glory no matter how much you announce me oh let the nations know that I'm only an ambassador. Let the nations know that we are only products of your mercy and grace. Go ahead and make that declaration. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. My spirit says, I just want to say, Baba.
learn it whenever he lifts you he lifts you so that he can be seen through you do not forget this whenever he lifts you hear me he lifts you so that he can be seen through you and don't just do a religious glory to God and your life is just suffering through pride when you are genuinely humble it, it shows There are many people who just say glory to God just to ease the guilt of looking proud. But all around, littered is the stench of pride. When you learn to decrease so that he will increase, the reward you get is that you are lifted higher so that you will lift him higher. I told you here, you've heard me and I'm speaking to a global family. Years ago, the Lord spoke to me and said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. For every one of the days after the conference, when I returned back, I just went to my room and knelt down and said, Lord, your boy is here. No matter what they say, let the nations clap. Thank you for the miracles. But this is the one you took from nothing and you have brought here. For the grace that you have given me I can never repay you but from my heart I'm saying Lord that I thank you For the wisdom you have given us we can never repay you but from my heart we're saying lord that i hold the hands of someone close to you we're wrapping up who is on the lord's side i've given you six keys number one one who has genuinely submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Number two, one who has submitted to the leadership of the Holy Spirit to guide you. You may look foolish, but like we always sing that when he holds your hands, we brought our tiny little hands full of ignorance and placed it over the hand of this great God. And he held that small hand and watch what he is doing with it never downplay the holy spirit he will take you to nations and he will not just produce wonders he will make your life an unending epistle it is true number three who is on the lord's side one who has chosen as an act of your will and by understanding to submit to the supremacy of the word that the word is exalted in your life above and beyond culture above and beyond status above and beyond whatever it is your sociological context the word of god has gained ascendance and supremacy your mind has become renewed and transformed even by the word who is on the lord's side for one who has made up his mind to live a consecrated life and a life of sacrifice a life that gives everything to him number six number five who is on the Lord's side the fifth person who is on the Lord's side is one who has made up his mind what's number five again one who has made up his mind to be an active part of God's program that for as long as I live the kingdom must find expression through me as God is looking for men there must be something that I do if I can't preach I will pray if I can't pray I will give in fact you should pray but I will give. I will use my profession. I will use my life. I will use my influence. I will use my resources. I will spend and be spent to see Jesus revealed to the nations. And finally, who is on the Lord's side? Number six, one who has chosen a choice to walk in humility as a lifestyle. Humility meaning that Jesus will always be seen intentionally so as the reason behind your results that as men celebrate you as men call you names they are free to do so 
because the glory goes to the Lord but the honor is to the saints so as he lifts you as he empowers you as he blesses you as he gives you visibility please do not forget this preacher's voice you will hear it in your dreams you will hear it when you are far away from me you may be far from me but be on the Lord's side use the weapon of humility don't be ashamed to get down on your knees and let the world know that you have been lifted by him that you are sustained by him they may say it's out of fashion it is fashionable to be the celebrity and you tell them he has blessed me enough and I'm I'm grateful he's kept the honor but let him take the glory hallelujah in one minute I like you to pray while holding hands pray these five into your life I don't know which of them you are and which of them you are not these six points I meant to say open your mouth and pray I want to be on the Lord's side perhaps when it has to do with salvation we can say you're on the Lord's side but when it has to do with consecration and sacrifice we may not say so for you perhaps when it has to do with humility we cannot say you're on the Lord's side I like you to use tonight's teaching to close that gap I truly desire to be on the Lord's side now and forever we have one minute cry to God on the Lord's side as a preacher on the Lord's side as a businessman on the Lord's side as a Nigerian on the Lord's side as a prestigious part of this global family hallelujah hallelujah keep your hands together I want to pray a prayer and then we're done Lord if you're healing someone in this nation don't do it without me don't do it without me Lord if you're lifting nations in this season don't do it without me You're blessing nations in the city. a family of faith and we declare that we remain ever available we thank you for showing us profound mercy you have singled us out as a people and you have chosen to honor us not just the week past you have invested your honor and your grace upon our lives and Lord we declare I declare on behalf of your people that we have chosen to be on the Lord's side in the name of Jesus Christ we declare that you grant unto us as individuals and as a ministry longevity of impact in the name of Jesus Christ and Lord we pray 
that everything that can become a distraction to our kingdom pursuit let it be far from us Amen. lord i'm praying for someone i'm praying for a family that may be discouraged right now looks like you have not seen a performance of the word of god you have celebrated as a global family but individually you are yet to see certain results i agree with you because you are now determined to be on the lord's side may the power that is on the lord's side work for you may the wisdom that is on the lord's side work for you may the speed that is on the lord's side work for you may the immunity that is on the lord's side work for you may the restoration that is on the lord's side work for you in the name of jesus christ this week i declare over your life by the power that raised jesus from the dead return with results this will be a week of strange evidences in your life whatever it takes to be fruitful whatever it takes to be a worthy ambassador i empower you with it right now in jesus name and i rebuke the hand of satan over your life in the name of jesus christ that by tomorrow even up until next week you will return with strange testimonies i declare protection over you i declare preservation over you i command favor upon your life your prayer life will never go down your word study life will never go down supernatural revelation by the spirit let the mantle of honor rest on you shame and reproach is far from your life you indeed will show yourself as a people that god has helped in the name of jesus christ wave your hands to jesus and give him praise give him praise give him praise give him praise hallelujah hallelujah in jesus name we're about to share the grace please let me encourage you just two instructions just two instructions number one listen to this message again please listen to this message again who is on the lord's side meditate upon it listen to it again and then number two as god grants you grace please listen to the message what seekest thou i want you to listen to it and god will grant you grace have you been blessed tonight the lord bless you we'll share the grace in fellowship and then we'll be on our way home god bless you the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen surely all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen god bless you and see you on sunday